sibuk nak. Dash cam. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back, and uh, what an exciting day this is today. We're uh, got the dash cam arrived, Amazon just delivered. So, yeah, I think we'll fit that today. Where the bloody hell's the dash cam? Bloody Amazon again. Karen! I don't know where she is either. Hmm. Another missing parcel. Not the uh, video I wanted to make today at all. But uh, let's go, go to the post office, I guess, see if it's been dropped there. Wire 12 volts, black wire. What the red. hell is going on in here? Um, um. And weren't you appropriately dressed? Oh, sorry. Safety first. I'm sorry. Leave her to it, I guess. Well, it's been a good four hours. Let's see how she's getting on. Can't imagine. Let's take a look anyway. What's going on in here? Gone shopping. I found the tool for the job. Look in the box. Oh, bloody hell, great. <laughs> Well, welcome back everybody and after all that fun and hilarity let's get on with the job apparently i am the right tool for the job we will find out and see if that's true so today we're installing the van true n4 pro uh widely regarded as one of the best dash cams out there at the moment and uh, there is a video doing the rounds at the moment you may have seen saying all dash cams are garbage I probably would agree, you know, uh, with some exceptions. Um, they're all using the same sensors pretty much, doesn't matter what they are. Um, but if you start pixel peeping at some of these shots that come out of these these cameras, they're not great, you know, they, you, you really can't read number plates and those kind of things. So the exception to the rule here is uh, the Van True N4 Pro and a few others use the Starvis 2, the Sony Starvis 2 sensor, which is definitely different. It's a cut above the rest. Um, so let's have a see how that turns out and if that's really true. I suppose the concern I've got at the moment is the camera's quite big. Um, it's got to go in the screen somewhere, um, probably in a, a correctly legal position as well so we're gonna have a little look at that um, so that's the concern I've got at the moment um, it's got a very long cable for the rear which I think is six meters I believe and I think that's just enough for the California the plan at the moment is to run that cable for the rear camera along the headlining uh, across the, the the left hand side of the van through the wardrobe and along the back into the airline locker where I'm going to have the camera sitting on the back of the airline locker uh, facing outwards. So that's the current plan. The power is a different story. The power needs to go down the right hand side, uh, down the A pillar and into the fuse panel on the right hand side. And um, that's a little bit different from the T6, uh, the T6 because the T6 power is in the center area. So yeah, this one's a little bit different on the 6.1. I've got this superly overly expensive Van True uh, hardwire kit. It is quite good because you can vary the range of the voltages and times quite uh, quite a lot, which is good. Um, but yeah, it was about £25. The actual dash cam was an absolute bargain. Um, normally 299 and I got it on a lightning deal at 229 So uh, yeah, really pleased with that. But yeah, let's get installing and see how it works out, I guess. So I think this is the best position for the dash cam uh, here. Uh, it's probably the only place it can fit. And yet we have to run the power cable from that point across the mirror and down. Um, so that's going to be interesting. And this is the hard wire kit that I need to hide behind the fuse panel. I'm going to set it to about 12.2 volts and run the wires down there. So attempt number one, ran the power cable across the top here, heading in the headline in uh, and down the A pillar, managed to squeeze it in between the glass. Um, but the only part that I couldn't get hidden was the part right at the windscreen and about halfway along the dash. Uh, so the original plan was to leave that exposed or glue it down, but I couldn't live with that. Now to take the A-pillar off, you've got to remove the grab handle. And I read in a lot of places that the plastic breaks on the grab handle, so I wanted to avoid that. Do you know, it was actually much simpler than that. There's a tiny little hole at the bottom of this handle. You can put a little screwdriver in just to start the separation of the plastic from the bottom. Then use your plastic trim tool just to continue the separation, wiggling as you go. And if you're careful enough, it's easy. It really is. Didn't break any clips, uh, so we were all good. 
Once that's done, there's two Torx bolts that you remove from this handle, the piece that's remaining. Uh, take those out and then the A pillar is pretty much free. There's one clip retaining it, but that comes loose quite easy. Uh, and the whole assembly is apart then. There is a tweeter wire which you need to be careful of, don't break that off. So there we have it, uh, all cable tied in quite nicely, uh, all the way down. And uh, luck would have it, that bolt there looks like a great earthing point straight into the chassis. So uh, it taps, it sounds like plastic, but no, it's uh, it's straight into the pay pillar. So uh, I'll check, make sure that we got some good ground there. But uh, yeah, it looks like a good ground. So just in case of putting this all back together, and I'm really pleased with that now, much better than what we had before. Okay, so yeah, I can confirm that that is a really good earth at the top there, so that's awesome. Now, I think this here, I've just measured this one here, engine's off, car's been switched off for quite a long time. Uh, this 25 amp fuse here, I believe, is permanently live, so that's where I'm going to piggyback off of. And I think the switched one, I believe, I'll test it in a second, I have a multimeter. I'll test it, but I think it's in this slot here, but we'll check that and we'll have a look and I'll confirm now, something to note is important here, really critical. And uh, some of these fuses the, in the um, in the panel here from Volkswagen, they only make one of these terminals live, um, oddly, in some of these spare fuses. So if you're going to do that, um, you've got to make sure that the live terminal obviously is going through the fuse of your dash cam. So, for example, if you if you put this side in the live, then uh, you'll get continuity between those points, which is great, but you're the wrong side of the fuse, so you need to make sure the live always comes into this side. So it's critical which way around these go, really, but uh, a little bit difficult to explain, but um, I guess as long as you get them around the right way, it's all good. So slightly uh, misled you there, that actually it isn't this gap here, it's this 10 amp fuse that you need to pull. So again, pull this fuse, check which side is live, and make sure that goes to the right side of the piggyback jumper that you've got in here. Um, just for reference in the van, in van true kit that I've got, that's the way, face, the fuse facing that way that you need to put for this one. I think the other one's going to be the other way. Let's see. So yeah, can confirm that this fuse here, uh, it needs to go this way up with the cable going out at the top in the van true kit. Um, it seems to work all right and I've tested that to make sure that the fuse is operable. Uh, it's in there. It's a little bit tight with this relay next to it, and maybe there's a better place, but uh, I think it'd be okay. You can route the cables down to the fuse panel uh, through this little hole here. It's just a case of pulling the vent off and then just placing it back on. So pretty happy with that, I think. Uh, that's good for the power. Uh, really happy with the install so far. Not a single wire showing, so uh, good stuff. So on to the uh, nightmare that is running that cable to the rear. Let's see how that goes. With the rear cable, I ran it across the headline and over the top of the A pillar. No need to take that one off. So I did need to remove the B pillar, which was really easy. Uh, on the right hand side, you kind of got to pull it out and away from a bracket, which you can see uh, there somewhere. And on the left hand side, you've got to push it towards the back of the van to unclip it. Yes, yeah, so it's interesting to see this. It, uh... It's like two channels here, so if you put it down the back channel, not the channel, it's like a channel from where the lights go, but if you put it down the back, it's much easier. Uh, I don't think there's anything obstructing it down through there, so that looks good. You can see it came straight out of the back here, no trouble at all, so let's see. I'm just literally going to pull this for a few now. As if by magic it starts raining. Anyway, cable comes down through here and uh, over the top of the cabinet here just dropped the clip of the cabinet or hook it out through here and stick the camera here somewhere hopefully one thing to note you don't need to pull these rubbers completely off you can squeeze the cable in under the headline and it's much easier that way well they were right this thing is a pain in the ass the seatbelt adjuster everything went back fine but the seatbelt adjuster uh was not in the right position there's a couple of forks that lock into the seat top of the seat belt and you need to make sure they're in the right place so i'm now battling with that to see if i can get that back together um but yeah that was uh, a bit of a surprise that was not working so i'm taking it all apart again to try and fix it so that concludes the install or well, the main install got the camera still missing at the moment which i'm going to do i've got some adhesive primer basically fancy name for a cleaner to clean the windscreen and then we've got these things electrostatic films they're called I've no idea what that's meant to mean, but uh, apparently they're meant to go on the screen in front of the lens, I think. But I really don't know what the point of that is. Uh, it said to stop distractions in the instructions. 
but you know what instructions are like don't read those uh so i need to go find out see if anybody uh, else on youtube has fitted these or what they mean but uh, it's almost like they're saying they're a polarizer but they're definitely not that um so we'll see okay the mystery of the electrostatic sticker that's easy for me to say basically it's to stop leaving residue from the 3m tape that's on the back of the camera so on the back of the camera you've got this sticker this good 3 3m yeah it's 3m uh stuff that when you tear this off the sticks on the windscreen they worry about uh residue being left behind um and various other reasons i guess but i've no idea why it seems like a crazy idea that you can stick a little bit of plastic between it and then stick it on the windscreen and expect it to all stay there i think it's just asking for trouble for it to fall off but i've got two of these and i've got two of these pads so i'm going to give it a try and see if it makes any difference but yeah it seems a bit of a, a weird way to do stuff and there we have it i think that's uh Install done, but I seem to be having a card error now. I've no idea why. Maybe it doesn't like this 512 gigabyte fancy card I've got in here. Maybe it's just too fast for it. But uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Give some test footage. Probably not today because it's pouring my rain, but uh, I'll try and add some test footage at the end of this video. Well, yes, I'm back out here the next day uh, surveying the situation, and that camera at the back needed to move. I couldn't deal with it. Uh, so it's off of the uh, airline locker, as you can see, and now on the glass. Uh, embedded the cable all the way around the glass, tucked it in really nicely. Got the cable through the wardrobe. So I only have that piece of exposed cable between the wardrobe and the tailgate. It's not ideal, but I didn't want to throw it through that grommet. That grommet that goes there looks like a nightmare to get through. And then once you get out the other side, had your fishes cable out. I did hear that you've got to take the bag off where the chairs are in and try and fish it out. It just sounded like a total nightmare. So... Uh, these plastics are quite fragile, certainly the light grey ones there are very fragile, so go careful with them. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with the view at the back now. The camera at the front have moved very slightly off of that uh, shaded area, uh, to the left and down a little bit. Um, the picture quality out of this M4 so far, it's M4 Pro, it's amazing. Really, really good, I'm really pleased with that. Um, I have a circular polarizer coming today as well, which should help with the glare, but these windscreens are I've got a lot of glare in these uh, transporters they seem to have I mean, in the Cali. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll be good. It's quite a big camera in the window. I think I mentioned that before. Uh, so just be aware of that. The Cali or transport screens are, wind screens are not that big, um, really for that size camera. But, you know, it's a price to pay for the, the quality of the picture. So I'm happy with that. Um, the other thing is, is I think that these are largely built for left-hand drive vans, these cameras, because the internal facing camera is on the right-hand side if that makes sense. So if it was on the passenger side, you'd have a better view. At the moment, it's a little bit obstructed by the mirror in occasions if you move the mirror in slightly a wrong angle. Uh, so it's something to bear in mind as well, but it's an awesome camera. Uh, would I do this install again? I probably would now I know what I'm doing. Uh, would I have done it knowing what I know now? Probably still would have done because I'm crazy. Um, but uh, if you're confident enough to do it, give it a go. But you, you know, you've either got to be confident bored stupid crazy all of the above um because it's an expensive van you don't want to go breaking it right so uh yeah have a go you've got the video here as a reference if that helps i hope it does um i think i'll get everything in the right place certainly all the power seems to be fine um but i hold no responsibility if you burn your van down i'm sure you won't do that um so yeah so that's about it really so it's all good it looks like the boss has arrived anyway, so uh, I better uh, be on my best behaviour. Hello. Hello, all right. What's Come going on in. on in here? Come and sit down. What's happened here then? Well, <laughs> I haven't broken anything. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've broken anything. But, uh, yeah, it's Did all you good. you have the right tools for the job in the end? <laughs> I had the right tools for the job. I was the right tool for the job. We have various tools along the way. Didn't need many tools, actually. It was all good. Yeah, you haven't broken anything. Nope. I Are you sure? I haven't broken anything, <laughs> <laughs> not that I know of, um, but no, yeah, it's all good. Um, well, I, I, I want to say um, thank you to our new subscribers as well, because um, it's, it's, um, we've had quite a few lately, so I don't know what we're doing right. <laughs> we must be doing something. Well, I don't know, is it because we've got a VW camper now, a VW California? Is that what's happened, or um, have I been promoting it a little bit more? I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's happened, but you're all welcome to, to be along and join us in, uh, in our travels. Um, Plan is to go down to Italy uh, in May, we believe. Right? Oh yeah, I can't wait. Go to the, um, Lake Como maybe, and um, we'd like to get to Venice as well. But, yeah, um, that'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah it's a bit of an interesting plan because uh, we're not taking the dogs with us this time, which will be uh, 
sad, but um, it gives us a little bit more freedom to do whatever, right? It's only a little trial, just to see without the dogs, but um, our family is looking after them, so they'll yeah. be safe. <laughs> so it'll be good. So yeah, we're uh, we're really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to our normal travel content soon. It won't be long. And uh, it's been a continuous autumn. Um, it seems to still be autumn now in, in spring. So uh, I think we're all fed up with it, aren't we? We'll, we'll get travelling. But uh, we want some sun. <laughs> we do want some sun. That is what we want. So uh, anyway, we'll leave it there for today. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.